Thank you, Susanna. And thank you to everyone who's joining us today. I think the message that we all convey is that even today, it can be difficult to come out as gay, queer, bisexual, and trans, but we only need a few close supporters or believers in us for us to flourish. So I'd like to start by thanking everyone who has supported and believed in me and my journey. Uh, my family, Bill, my husband, my incredible staff at the Iowa Department of Public Health and all of those who work with us. I truly had a village of nominators, all of whom eagerly stepped up to participate in this process. I'm humbled by their words and their thoughts. Um, and I know that each of them had an important role in contributing to and facilitating any success that I've had in my career. I'd also like to thank those at DSM Magazine and One Iowa, American Equity, and the other sponsors who continue to recognize LGBTQ leaders and their allies in Iowa. In particular, I appreciate that they chose to recognize a number of us who have worked or are working in healthcare and in public health during two of our country's most difficult challenges, HIV and COVID-19. Both diseases have highlighted the profound price that we are paying for not addressing systemic inequality and injustice nationally and globally. On the positive side of these two uh, pandemics, if there is such a thing, almost everyone I meet now knows what I mean when I say that I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist and I work for a state public health department. That certainly never used to be the case. When I was in graduate school to become an epidemiologist, I was taught that public health was the art and science of preventing disease, prolonging life, and improving the quality of life through organized efforts, informed choices of society, organizations, communities, and individuals. But what I have learned after nearly 30 years in, of public health practice is that a more accurate definition would be the art and science of identifying and addressing the outcomes of systemic and discriminatory policies and practices in our society that stem from racism, homophobia and heterosexism, transphobia, xenophobia, sexism and ableism. I don't think that public health is often enough recognized as being fundamentally about human, addressing human rights and social justice. But disparities in health at a population level for nearly every disease and every human condition that we study can be linked directly to social, political, and environmental conditions that advantage some populations while disadvantaging others. And HIV and, and COVID-19 in particular have highlighted the direct path from discrimination and marginalization on one side to poor health and disease outbreaks on the other. But societies can also take action to reverse health disparities and, and health inequality and inequity. And that's what public health is all about. And so um, I'd like to close on a positive note and say that Iowa has some nation leading statistics on reducing HIV transmission among its residents, even as it's clear that we still have a good ways to go. And we are in a good place to take action to eliminate HIV and the health disparities that are associated with it. In January, we will launch a statewide planning effort to begin to end this HIV epidemic. You can, be, you can rest assured that we will be having some very tough conversations and discussion about systemic discrimination. Racism, homophobia, and transphobia in particular in Iowa. I hope that many of you who are here today will join us in what we're calling Stop HIV Iowa. You can follow our efforts and you can participate in the process at stophiviowa.org. So again, I just wanna say thank you very much for this honor and for recognizing me and for recognizing all of these, these important leaders in, in Iowa. Thank you.